thank you, uh, Luke, as well for that. It's great to see the industry perspective and uh, it's good to see that the technologies have helped with uh, de-risking exploration, which was the, the big aim. So I've got a very short presentation here, just a few minutes, um, just to uh, introduce um, some of the tectonic geodynamic models that we've applied to better understand uh, the history of Papua New Guinea, uh, particularly the rifting, uh, seafloor spreading histories, and then the collisions, because although they may not uh, directly dictate what's happening at that well scale, clearly the plate uh, driving forces and uh, are, are what's creating uh, the architecture that we see on the margins. And of course, I'd like to also acknowledge um, Joe Tobin and Rakib Hassan uh, for, for this at Sydney Uni, but also I've worked uh, a lot with Jeremy Ivanek, Kevin Hill, Daniela Garrett, and, and others at Oil Search, and that's been um, a lot of fun. So the other day, we just talked about the complexity of Southeast Asia, um, particularly for PNG. You can see there's a suture zones running through here, these pink and blue lines, lost uh, ocean basins um, that, that have been consumed through subduction. And uh, the question is, how can we actually restore these, resurrect these plates uh, and see what uh, the past uh, uh, plate motions have been and how they've shaped uh, the evolution of topography and structure, of course, uh, deeper underground. And um, one of the things that became very clear from uh, the beginning was uh, that there was a phase of back arc opening uh, along uh, Papua New Guinea um, in the New Guinea margin from about 160 million years ago, we have the central Irian Ophiolite belt, which is about 160 million, or million year old oceanic crust. Uh, very interestingly, as parts of the Philippine archipelago formed at that same time and likely formed on, on this margin. Uh, and then one of the things that we've been trying to understand is, well, how big was this back arc? And clearly this is in this animation, it's the biggest end member uh, possible that we're portraying here, but we tested a number of uh, sizes, you know, from a minimum size similar to the Sea of Japan to, to something uh, intermediate, say a thousand kilometers across. Uh, and, and so these numerical models allowed us to essentially uh, test th those geometries, test whether the CPIC terrain collided at 50 or 30 million years ago, uh, and very interestingly, I think we've, we've um, come to a conclusion essentially through the BGH that um, there was a collision about 50 million years ago. Um, and uh, this may have been, probably was linked to the cessation of spreading in the Coral Sea about 53 million years ago. Um, and it uh, does a great job of reproducing uh, the mantle structure, that timing. And that's been confirmed with more uh, recent uh, work of uh, Luke Mani. So some of the things that um, we were doing initially was uh, just looking at the size of this back arc uh, basin that could have existed. And one of the constraints we were using was just even things like paleo latitudes from paleomagnetic data on, on the Philippine archipelago. It's, it's the only thing that uh, we had available to us. There's some scant uh, paleomag from um, the CPIC terrain itself, um, but yeah, so the, 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 the intermediate, this 1500 kilometer north-south extent of this back arc seemed to produce uh, the best mantle structure with a collision at 50 million years ago. Now, the interesting thing that came out uh, from our AAPG EAGE um, conference last year, uh, just before COVID, was um, some work by David Gold, who was looking at the biogeography um, uh, and, and some fossils and perhaps that the CPIC terrain uh, had its origins here uh, along Northeast uh, Queensland, Northeast Australia, uh, and that, that it rif rifted off 100 million years ago. Now that has implications even for Eastern Australia. Um, we know about the Cordillera um, that then collapsed during the rifting. Um, and so that, that is something that I'll be uh, testing in the future to because I think this will change dramatically the geodynamics and the convergence um, history, the obliquity at least of the convergence. Of course, something that's um, uh, relevant to Papua New Guinea um, and the collisional history, the, 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 you know, the angles um, and, and the direction of convergence is what the Philippine Sea Plate is doing because that collision of this uh, Caroline Plate, um, the, the, the arc, Torricelli, Finisterre, Adelbert uh, terrains, 
um, you know, 15, 10 million years ago is what created the massive uplift in the fold and thrust belt. But it's really important to fine tune uh, those kinematics. And so we've just been using um, very recently um, paleomag from the Philippine sea plate. So you can see that to understand the PNG, often we have to actually look elsewhere. We have to look in Eastern Australia. We have to look in the uh, Philippines um, to, in the Pacific to see what is going on regionally. Uh, and uh, you saw this slide from uh, the other day, but essentially uh, this is more recent work from thermochronology from uh, Luke Mani, um, who demonstrates that there, there's an early collision, an Eocene collision, um, with uh, up to three kilometers of removal of sediment in the Eocene, uh, and then another phase of, of, of collisional, um, uh, well, de denudation uh, in the last 10 million years or so. Um, so that's been quite interesting. And as I mentioned before, um, the, this idea that the seepic terrain collided by about 50 million years ago to shut down the coral sea spreading. Uh, it was alluded to in, in this paper by Shellat and Spackman uh, in 2015 as well, kind of simultaneously as we were working on it. So there's clearly um, a, a convergence in the scientific community about at least that collision. And um, you, what we did was to, to run those different tectonic scenarios in these global uh, plate reconstruction models and mantle flow models. And we could predict that this slab that sits underneath Australia, uh, underneath Lake Eyre at the present, um, can be reproduced if you have this intermediate sized back arc basin uh, and this collision at 50 million years ago that consumes this, uh, this Cretaceous uh, crust dominantly. Okay, so, uh, but if we try to put in a collision of 30 million years ago, well, the predicted slab is in the wrong place. It's at the wrong depths and it's at the wrong latitudes. So, um, you can see all the all the um, uh, data and evidence coming together. And importantly, um, uh, when we run these mantle flow models, we've been looking at dynamic topography um, for for industry uh, partners. It's been interesting to see the uptake of, of this um, concept that the mantle can drive uh, topographic changes. Of, of course, they're only a few hundred meters but they can actually cause tilts of the entire margin. We demonstrated that um, in Alaska and, and Papua New Guinea actually. Um, but even on a continental scale, um, these models produce the best fits to the northeastward tilt of Australia. So really quite promising um, numerical modeling. So just a quick uh, overview that uh, we've, um, this is actually um, my really terrible sketches that were turned into beautiful works of art by um, Jeremy Ivanek and the oil search team. Um, um, and you can see here uh, this, this back arc opening, um, possibly the Philippine archipelago, but possibly the Sepik terrain um, from 160 MA. By 50 million years ago, there's been the collision of the Sepik um, uh, terrain, the arc, this composite terrain. Um, and then from about uh, 20, at least 25 million years ago, uh, south dipping subduction. Uh, to produce the Marimuni volcanic arc um, uh, and to consume essentially what we would call, I guess, the uh, proto Molucca sea plate um, and eventually collision uh, with the um, Caroline arc, you know, the Adelbelt Finisterre Torricelli terrains uh, in the last 15 million years. Um, and that's really all I wanted to showcase on the updates to the plate reconstructions over the last few years. Thank you for your attention.